SOLO2 was actually, the efficacy data was presented at the Society of Gynecologic Oncology a couple months ago. And the SOLO2 data uh, follows and looks a lot like study 19, but in fact, the data is even better. So the placebo arm had a uh, median PFS of about five months. This is consistent with all of the placebo controlled maintenance trials. They're between four and five months. But the elaborate treated arm was at 19 months. I mean, that is a whopping prolongation of progression-free survival. And that was the investigator analysis. If you look at the independent radiologic review, it actually goes out, I believe, to 30 months. Um, so it's a very positive trial. It is um, uh, going to the FDA. I have no doubt this drug will be approved. The quality of life data, I think, basically follows what you would expect. Patients who are on a lap rib, maintenance, do well. Uh, there was a concern about the formulation because the old capsule formulation required the patients to take 16 pills a day. That's a lot of pills. The tablet form is much uh, lower. Um, and so, so far it looks like the tablet's going to be a home run. Uh, and then the rest of the uh, adverse events are what you would expect from a PARP inhibitor. There's some fatigue, there's some nausea, the nausea disappears after a while. There's some mild um, uh, myelosuppression. That's about it. This is, um, this, it, this fits Dr. Beer's definition of a good maintenance drug. It's easy to take, it's convenient, minimal side effects, and it's efficacious.